What is going on you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today we are going to be unboxing, setting up, and reviewing this little bad boy here. The Razer Viper Mini. Little brother to the Viper and Viper Ultimate over here, which I have to say, in my opinion, is the best mouse on the market. But this retails for half the price of the regular Viper and less than a third of the price of the Viper Ultimate while still packing in a ton of the same features. Not to mention for being a compact mouse, you can actually palm claw and fingertip grip extremely well. This thing surprised me. Let's check it out. All right, so I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a tremendous fan of the Viper Ultimate. Have not tried the Viper regular yet. I mean, so I've kind of got the bottom of the totem pole and then I got the old tippity tip of the tip top with the uh the ultimate which is in my opinion and the opinion of a lot of people out there pretty much the best the best mouse on the market over Logitech, Corsair, HyperX, Steel Series, any of those. And I'm not a Razer fanboy or anything like that. I've tried a lot of peripherals, a lot of gaming peripherals on this channel here, and I got to say uh things pretty amazing. But this but this little bad boy right here, it's little brother, it's little, it's little cousin, if you will. It may be scrappy, but it likes to fight. And this thing has a lot of the same features for a retail of $40, but you can get this thing pretty consistently for about $30. That's what I picked this one up for, brand new on Amazon. And uh, even at $40, I feel like it has some pretty sweet features. So the sensor drops from 20,000 DPI or dots per inch down to 8,000 on the, uh, or 8,500, I'm sorry, not 8,000, 8,500 on the Viper Mini, which is completely fine because you'll never run it that high anyway at 8,500. So whenever you get something with a CPI or DPI of 16,000, 18, 20K, that's more so for bragging rights. If you're playing a shooter or something, you're probably going to have your DPI at about 800 to 1,000 anyway. I play at 1,800. I know that's a little high, but I turned in-game sensitivity down just a skosh. You know, so that's not a big deal at all, having 8,500. And this is lighter, though. Instead of 74 grams, which is the Viper Ultimate's weight, which is insanely light, especially for a wireless. This is wired, but it is 61 grams. Now, a lot of that's because it's a compact. It's super, super small, so that's less plastic in the shell. And it still has those Razer optical switches, which aren't mechanical. They actually actuate or register quicker because it's a light beam that gets broken in there. They're light-based, not a mechanical switch. And also, they're about a third of the volume. At least they were on the Viper Ultimate. And I'm assuming, unless the acoustics of the shell throw this one off, they should be very quiet too. Which is good if you're chatting over buddies, uh, chatting with friends through like Discord or the Xbox Live app on the Windows 10 or something like that. Uh, or especially if you're streaming, because you already have the clickier mechanical keyboard, you don't want mouse clicks on top of that. Granted, it's kind of just expected when you're going to watch a stream that you're going to hear a lot of clicking in the background. But, the, you know, obviously, if you don't have to, I mean, whatever draws focus to your voice in the gameplay, that's a plus. Uh, and since this is wired, this actually uses Razer's SpeedFlex cable system. Just a bit of a marketing name there, but basically what it is is a very, very lightweight and very low drag. So instead of rubber or um, traditional traditional braided cable, it's like this microfiber, real velvety material that glides across your mouse pad. It's going to be, it's going to feel lightweight, like it's not really dragging. So they, they boast that you don't need a cable bungee because of that. And uh, I have used SpeedFlex cables on Razer wired devices. They do feel really good, but there's no real replacement for being actually legit wireless. Uh, being wireless is kind of the way to go. That's why I've transitioned from mice and headsets over to wireless, as there is zero latency now. With a good 2.4 gigahertz dongle, like wireless latency, it's not really a thing anymore. Um, but if you do want to play wired, or you do just want to pay half the price of a Viper, or less than a third of the price of the Viper Ultimate to get... The same optical switches, RGB lighting, 8500 DPI sensor, same awesome cosmetic looks as the Viper series and a smaller form factor. This, this one, this might be the mouse for you boys. I feel like I've been talking for a while and I haven't even broken into this box, but that's okay. So the packaging is incredibly cheap compared to other Razer products and that's because, well, it's a cheap item. They're trying to keep their production costs down. You do have the traditional Razer instruction manual with the sticker, only a solo sticker in this one. Usually with their high-end products, you get two stickers, one for each side of your bumper. I don't know if people actually sticker bomb their cars with these or if they put them on their gaming tower or whatever. 
Uh, to me, stickers at this age, I'm, I'm pretty elderly now. Stickers are kind of tacky to me, but you know, it is what it is. Really good Razor instruction manual as usual. Lots of lime green branding in there as that is their theme color. But uh, pictures in there, very informative. Uh, <clears throat> and this one isn't like a brochure. This one isn't like a flip through book. It's more of like a pamphlet or brochure kind of thing. You have your uh, alternate languages back here, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Um, some tribal language that Columbus discovered. And then you have your English, my native tongue, ladies, over here. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. I don't know how to read, so we're going to set that aside. But again, very, very cheap packaging here. This is some, some basic egg carton here. Um, nothing crazy. You know, when you, when you step up the food chain with the razor products, you're going to get laser cut foam and stuff like that. But, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, fingering this cable out here. Had to get aggressive with it for a second, but... Alright, I'm going to peel her like a banana, boys. Mm. There we go. So yeah, this packaging... <laughs> going to peel her out of the condom, boys. We're done with that. We've done what we need to do with that. Alright, so like the Viper Ultimate, uh, not the Viper Regular, but the Viper Mini and the Viper Ultimate had these really, really sweet aftermarket style skates. You don't even need to upgrade with something like, I don't even know if my face is in the in the shot here, but anyway, you can look at my hands if you want. I could be a, a watch model. You don't even need to upgrade with a company like G-Skates or anything with an aftermarket set of skates. Razor's uh, white skates are some of the best stock skates. Well, actually, they, they, they are the best stock skates I have ever used. They glide super smooth while still giving you a good amount of control. Uh, so they're fast, but they're also controlled. So it strikes like a real good balance. Um, just really, really nice in general. So you have your 8500 DPI sensor in here, uh, which is raised up just slightly. It's not like the Viper Ultimate that has another skate around that or anything like that. Just the plastic shroud. And you have top and bottom skates here. So I have a feeling this thing's going to glide like freshly churned butter. So you have your Hyperflex cable here, which does feel really nice. It's like this woven microfiber, and it is also very, very light too. So, um, you know, this probably is a very, very close runner-up to being wireless as far as, you know, the sensation of no drag and having ultimate freedom of your movements. So that is really, really nice. You have a Razor-branded USB port there with, of course, some lime green in there because marketing is everything. Same exact Opti Mechanical switches. I am not going to compare the side by side with the Viper Ultimate in this video. I am going to make a separate video comparing the Mini, the Viper Ultimate, and the regular run of the mill standard missionary position Viper. Uh, but this does have the identical Opti Mechanical switches. I can tell they feel the same, they sound the same, which is awesome. They actuate super quickly. And I usually am not a fan of compact mice. I just feel like they are, well, too small for one. I have pretty average size hands. I'm an average North American man, 5'11", 175 pounds. But I will say, um, this doesn't feel that compact. I can still palm grip it comfortably. Claw grip feels good. Fingertip grip feels pretty good. So that's awesome. The fact that this is a compact mouse, but I can run all three grips comfortably and ergonomically. Palm, fingertip, or palm, claw, and fingertip, and it feels natural. Side buttons are interesting. Um, I, I, th th so I do like the size of them and how pronounced they are, that they are, they stick out of the shell far enough to where you can cleanly hit them. If you slide your thumb up, you're going to tell that you're touching the buttons, and you can cleanly hit this one with the ball of your thumb, and with the tip of your thumb, you can hit the other one. They are both separated enough to where you're not going to accidentally actuate or hit the wrong one. Uh, so I do like that. They have an interesting feel to them. I don't think they feel quite as good click clickiness wise as the Viper Ultimate, but I do like how raised they are out of the shell. That's something I didn't like about the Ultimate uh, is that they're really, they're dang near flush with the shell. So, you know, when you brush your hand up quickly from the side, you don't really feel them raised or anything like that but yeah these feel these feel really good though i like them scroll wheel has really nice distinct steps in there so that's good clicking it down feels ultra responsive you have one dpi button on the top now this is something i did not like about the viper ultimate i don't switch my dpi modes on the fly i just set it to 1800 and i go but most razor mice 
have uh, an up and down DPI. So you can drop it down a few levels, crank it up a couple levels. With the Viper Ultimate, it's on the bottom and nobody's gonna stop in the middle of a, of a match and be like, whoop, hold on, I picked up a sniper rifle, time to drop down the DPI. Flip it upside down, you know, pick the DPI they want, you would die, you would literally die. So um, that's nice that it's right there. You can just quickly switch like that. Uh, if you're one of those one three one grip people that put your middle finger on the uh, mouse wheel for quick melees, that feels so unnatural. I feel like the dude from Scary Movie too. I've got a game with my strong hand, child. Um, but yeah, it, it does feel as natural as that grip can. Um, now there is no rubberized grip on the side whatsoever. It's just hard plastic. It is very very slick and whatnot. However. We are going to be customizing this bad boy as we do with everything on this channel. I leave nothing stock, controllers, headsets, um, you know, I, I get something and I just want to hydro dip it and upgrade it and put better skates on it. Well, that's not applicable here, but you know, I just want to grease up and oil up the internals to get it all smooth. I want to put grip tape on it. I want to, you know, I want to customize the real, the niblets off it. So um, this is going to get customized. The side is hard plastic. I am going to be doing some kind of rubberized grip here because that does not feel good, especially if you are claw or palm gripping your thumb and ring finger just slip around it, which isn't ideal. This is nice. It's not like super compact. It's not like, where's this? Where's that thing at? This, like a travel compact mouse, which is like substantially smaller. You can't do anything with this. Um, this is literally just for like, if you're traveling with a laptop and you need to do some productivity work, you could actually game with this, I can tell. So, pretty darn sweet. Let's hop over here on the PC, get it hooked up with the Razer Synapse 3 app, get all the drivers running, get that RGB pop in the corneas, hop into a little gameplay and I'll give you guys my uh, initial thoughts. All right, so I know I said I wasn't gonna compare it to the Viper Ultimate and I'm not, but just real quick, size comparison here. These are two mid-size ambidextrous mice. This is the Viper Ultimate and this is the uh, Razer Lancehead. Uh, wireless and uh, this is not that much smaller like at all um, like it's it, it is a little smaller but not that much like at all it's a little narrower I will say but like lengthwise it's and it's it's a little shorter and a little narrower but it's ain't that much smaller so the fact that this is that much lighter 64 grams versus uh, 60, 64 versus 74. That's pretty impressive. Now, granted, this is wireless. So you're gonna have that, that wireless receiver in there, but still, I mean, yeah, stock skates, absolutely amazing. And that hyper hyper glide. I, I love marketing names like that. The, the Tomahawk deluxe cable here, um, actually is super, super not noticeable. It almost actually does feel like you're wireless, which is Pretty insane. Um, the combination of this mouse being light itself and then having that hyper glide or hyper sense, whatever cable, um, it actually does feel almost wireless. So you really don't need a cable bungee with this at all. It's just that and the stock skates. I mean, this thing just glides like some of that Amish butter, boys. Oh, that's cool too. Not only do you get the RGB right there, but you also get a nice little glowing ring on the rump or the tuchus of this bad boy. Um, that's really cool. I like that a lot. I, I like RGB when it's done tastefully. I don't like to overdo it. As you see, I'm not like swarmed with RGB on my setup or anything like that. But um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I like that a lot. That's cool. All right, you guys over here at my PC, gonna go ahead and share the old screen here. Whenever you plug in a new Razer device and you already have Synapse 3 application installed, it will prompt you to install an update. This is to install the initial drivers or firmware. Uh, it is usable as soon as you plug it in. As with most Razer products, it will function at least for you to navigate around and stuff, but uh, it obviously won't have full control over the RGB lights. You won't be able to program any buttons, change your DPI in the software or anything like that until this is done. And uh, in my experience, 99% of the time, this will require a Windows 10 re um, restart at the end of this install. Alrighty guys, so initial install of drivers is complete. I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough of the Razer Synapse 3 app. We won't wa waste too much time here. Click on the Razer Viper Mini over here. This is the dashboard. And this uh, application is really cool. You can set up lighting with other effects like fill a pew lighting in your room and stuff like that. Nano leaf, all that other good stuff. So you're gonna click on your Viper Mini over here. The first tab is customized. This is gonna allow you to remap anything on here from scroll wheel up and down, scroll click. And then also the two buttons on the side. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention when I was overviewing the actual body of the mouse itself that I do like quite a bit 
is that uh, this, even though this is a ambidextrous mouse, it's not a true ambidextrous mouse because there's not these two buttons mirrored over there on the side. So whenever a mouse comes with, you know, these two buttons and then, oh, it's an ambidextrous, so it has the same exact two buttons on the other side. I deactivate the other two buttons because a lot of times you'll accidentally hit those when you're trying to claw or fingertip grip where you're pinching it on the sides to move it around. You'll accidentally squeeze the mouse body trying to pinch it and you'll hit those buttons. And if you're not using those buttons, just shut them off, just disable them. Uh, so you have by default, this is to cycle through your sensitivity with that little button on top there. I would leave all these default personally because you can remap your bindings in each game. But if you do want to set them to like a Windows 10 specific function, like to launch a uh, application or to uh, turn your volume up and down with these two buttons or something like that, you can do all that here. And you can also set up macros, which is really cool. My neighbor decided to bring their trash can back right now. You can also set up macros with their, with your keyboard and your mice through Razer, which allows you basically to, you know, I don't know if you guys know what a macro is. When you press one button, it does a series of key inputs. So you can jump down, spin around, take them to pound town, throw a grenade, drop a shield, swig a potion, drop a spell, all with like one button, which is pretty cool. Next tab over here, you have performance. And uh, you have five levels of DPI adjustment. These are not stored on board the mouse itself. There is no onboard memory. So you're going to have to have the Synapse 3 application uh, launched to control these. Uh, and if you don't want these, say you just want two because, you know, you pick up a sniper rifle and you want to drop DPI about 600 points for some precise, precise uh, finite movements. You can do that. Me personally, I don't really switch, switch my DPI very often. Well, very often as in at all. So I set my one DPI and then I have another remappable button now with that DPI switch or whatever. That can be my, uh, my uh, I don't know, tactical grenade or my melee or something like that in, because I'm not going to be cycling sensitivity. But again, this is just personal preference. This is what I do. Uh, polling rate, I would leave that at the maximum, which is a thousand, which is what it has by default. That's how many times this refreshes or pings its connection to the... Um, PC for a wireless and for wired, it works very similarly. It's basically, uh, yeah, how often it reports data back to the PC. So obviously the higher, the better. Lighting over here, this is your tab for RGB, of course. Uh, if this is wireless, which it's not, but a wireless mouse, you can turn it off or dim the lights and that will save battery life. For uh, being wired, shoot, just leave it cranked if you want. Unless it's disorienting, then turn it down a little bit. Again, these really only matter for wireless. Um, you know, if you don't touch your mouse for about five minutes and you want to save juice, you can turn this on. But if you're wired, it doesn't really matter. And then, of course, you have your default quick RGB settings. So static light, breathing, etc. And then also over here in advanced, you can set up custom profiles in the Razer Studio application, which is right here. And this allows you to have, uh, I also have a pair of Razer headphones, but they're turned off right now. This is my MSI motherboard inside my actual PC case, which does coordinate with Razer lights. So I can have all my devices doing a cool little pattern across each other, which is uh, really, really cool. And then calibration over here. So the default calibration feels really good on every Razer mouse I've tested. And I have tested probably 15 or 16 of them on this channel. I actually just did a comparison recently of every single wireless Razer mouse in the lineup. It's like eight or nine of them. That will be linked in the description below. Um, surprised that video didn't get a lot of views because I literally side by side compared like $700 worth of Razer mice. Thank God I didn't have to pay for that out of pocket or I'd be pissed because nobody watched it. Um, anyway, you can add a surface over here, which is very, which is a really cool feature. So you can select all of these uh, Razer models of mouse pads they have my god they have a lot of mouse pads or you can actually calibrate for your mouse pad no matter what brand it is and when you do this we're actually going to do it right now huh that's the first time i've ever seen that usually you can actually calibrate for your mouse pad even if it's not a razor one you do a little test where you zigzag and then it has you go up and down and it basically gets used to the fabric of your mouse pad but that's not here if you don't have a razor branded mouse pad you can't get a custom profile for it which isn't a huge deal because, like I said, the default feels really good at my 1800 DPI. It feels buttery smooth. If it does look a little bit skippy or juttery, that's because the uh, screen recording is at 60 frames per second. I recorded at that because that is the cap for YouTube anyway. 
Uh, but on my monitor here, what I see is native 144 hertz or frames per second, so it looks very fluid, very smooth on my end. All right, enough jaw jacking and lip smacking. Let's hop into Cold War and smack some people around a little bit. I haven't played Cold War in a few weeks, so hopefully I get a real light SBMM lobby because I think I quit the game. Well, my theory about getting an easy lobby right off the bat, uh, that's, that, that's, that's not a thing. Prestige level 7. Prestige level 2. Prestige. Prestige level 60. Like we got some we got some sweat lords in here, boys. <laughs> G Fuel dripping off the mustache, DPI at a thousand, headphones cranked to eleven, fucking bull shark testosterone shot directly in the urethra tip. It's gonna be a fun lobby, boys. I mean oh, whoop, oh, whoop. Oh. Do I'm getting some insane like frame rate drops? I'm not really sure what's going on, but it really is like my frame rate's going crazy right now. So I don't know if you guys can see it on my, my screen recording, but golly jeepers. All right, I'm going to push these hoes. You're an idiot for even trying to do whatever it is you were trying to do. What's my... Oh, that's my prone. I forgot I remap my prone to E. So I, I guess so I can... Boy, I have not played in a while. <laughs> I didn't even remember my key binds. Alright. Oh. The audio design in this game is very good. It sounded like that guy was off to the right, but really he was behind me giving me the Dutch rudder. It ain't no escape from Tarkov when it comes to audio design. Holy shit, sniper. My accuracy was poop. Jesus Christ. Good thing I got a big mag on that AK, because my accuracy is not what it used to be, ladies. Let me tell you that right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know where you're at, big dog. Stupid bitch. So, Cold War still sucks, there's no surprise there. What does not suck, though, is the Viper Mini, actually. This isn't like a super compact mouse, even though it's labeled as a compact mouse. It's uh, actually incredibly ergonomically comfortable. The only thing, the only real complaint I have about this period is the fact that it doesn't have any kind of rubberized grip whatsoever on the sides. It is just hard plastic, and the plastic actually feels uh, kind of kind of cheap and crappy. Uh, but other than that, I mean, great optical switches, good sensor in there, the mouse wheel feels good, um, it has RGB, which is a plus, these side buttons feel great, stock skates are good, this cable feels almost like your wireless, which is awesome. Um, so overall, a fantastic mouse, especially for the price. I mean, the fact that this retails for like $40 and you can get it on sale on Amazon a lot for about 30 bucks, that is linked in the description below. Just a fantastic mouse, but uh, I got a whiff of something while I was gaming. Yeah, it smells pretty stock. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take this thing apart and customize this bad boy. So make sure you subscribe and uppercut the nutsack of the notification bell so you're aware as soon as that video goes live when I do the full teardown and customization of this bad boy because it just looks very stock compared to its uh, siblings over here. So we can't have that. Um, not, not in this room. Not in the gamer heaven. It needs to be a one-off custom. So... Uh, that's going to do it, guys. Hopefully this video was uh, entertaining and informative for you guys. A, a little combo of entertainment and information together. And if it was, uh, turn those two fingers into a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.